Welcome back. I'm still talking about faith and today it's the refining of our faith. How does our faith get refined? What is this kind of idea of refining and how is it compared to gold? Well, in the world around us, people use the word refined. If you know how to speak and know how to dress well and know how to use your knife and fork and spoon, but none of these are part of God's programme. He refines our inner character and we need to recognise when and how he's doing it so we can work with him instead of against him, working with the Holy Spirit. Now our key verse was written by the Apostle Peter. This is what Peter wrote. Rejoice greatly, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. Can you relate to that? Why are we do? Why is this happening? Well, so that the genuineness of your faith, which is more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though it's tested and purified by fire, may be found to result in your praise, glory, and honor. That's uh, one Peter one six and seven from the Amplified text. So Peter is saying, your faith gets tested, it gets purified, refined, like gold does. I mean, most gold, this is, this is uh, very pure gold, very high carat gold, but most gold is about nine carat, which is just 30% pure. It's not pure gold, it's too soft. But gold usually comes from a mine, and we've all come into the kingdom of God from the mine, from the world. He's drawn us into the kingdom, translated us into his kingdom, and we are now being refined. Well, he's got a lot of work to do to remove doubt and unbelief, and so we can follow him in simple faith. So that's the principle. How does God refine us? Well, how did he refine Peter? Peter wrote this letter in AD 62 to 65, 30 odd years after the crucifixion. He himself would end up on a cross, crucified upside down. And he passed through a furnace of many difficulties. And he wrote from personal experience. The apostle knew that God used fire to test the genuineness of our faith. And later on in 1 Peter 4, 12, he wrote again, Do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal which is taking place to test you, to test the genuineness of your faith, as though some strange or unusual thing was happening to you. So, you know, we, we sometimes think, why is this happening to us? What's going on? Well, Peter wrote, don't think it's strange when you're going through tests and trials. It's just normal. It's a normal part of God's training program. And when you realize that, you can answer the question, why is all this happening to me? because we're being refined. He's refining us, testing our faith, and testing if it's genuine faith. Now, of course, the furnaces God uses are not physical hot furnaces. Uh, they, are, they are not, thank goodness, flowing with molten metal. No, our furnaces are described by the prophet Isaiah. So it's in Isaiah 48 and verse 10. I am refining you, but not like silver. I have tested you and chosen you in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake of my name, I will do it. Well, God was saying through his prophet that he would refine his people so that his name would not be spoken against. And as Christians, we need to realize that we're under the microscope. People look at us, watch our lives, and we say we have faith. Well, where's your faith in this situation? So God wants us to have genuine faith in our hearts so he can say to the devil, have you considered my servant? And you put your name in there, you know, have you considered my servant Job? He boasted about Job. That's in Job uh, chapter two and verse three. He therefore refines us in a furnace of affliction. Well, you know what Job went through, all the all the sickness and losing his family. It was a furnace of affliction. What 
then or who then are his refining instruments the apostle paul warned, warned his spiritual son timothy in uh, 2 timothy 3 12 and 13 in the amplified bible all who delight in godly living will be hunted and persecuted because of their faith well that's good news evil men and impostors will partly be responsible for this so the apostle there realized and warned his son timothy that false brethren 2 corinthians eleven twenty six, will make our lives difficult and that's why we need to be aware of wolves and beware of wolves in sheep's clothing in matthew 7 15 jesus warned us about wolves religious people in sheep's clothing now more often than or not it's family members who are the major instruments used by god just ask joseph they threw him in a pit and behind their cruel actions though was the hand of god preparing food for his people jesus warned us that family members would be a major difficulty for us in matthew 10:38 so whether it's religious people family members or colleagues at work we are just going to be refined by a furnace of affliction now when these things happen and you realize that something's going on you say just think to yourself well it's just another test Get, ask yourself how many out of ten you got this time and if you if the lord gives you a two out of ten then say lord Give me grace to go better next time to get a better mark next time. You can be sure there's going to be a next time because God is determined to refine us and to let people see what his people's characters are like and what our quality of faith is like. Let's pray together. Father, I now realise how I respond to your various refining instruments will determine my character. Help me to be like the Apostle Paul who was able to glory in tribulations because he realized what was being produced in his character. Thank you for the great price that you paid and the great grace that you're showing in teaching me to trust you without doubting. Amen. No more doubt. Realize it's just, just a test. It's just a furnace of affliction. You'll come through.